Hey, good morning, it's evening. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Heba. Good morning, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Yeah, doing fine. I'll be mute for the first uh, couple of minutes and uh, then uh, I can I can talk. Yeah. Sounds good. So maybe we can wait uh, another minute uh, and Zibnik and we can get started. I, I think we only have half, half hour, so. Okay, so it will be just us, right? Yeah, it's probably gonna be us, I think it's, it's uh, I was just thinking. So, okay. Tom, so, Tom so Tom, Tom, yeah, Tom, Tom will join later. He, he mentioned that he will be able to join like, you know, like, you know, in a few minutes. So, but we, we can definitely start. So just let me know when you are ready. Yeah, well, we can get started now. So, I mean, I think uh, yeah. uh, since we don't have a lot of time. So. Okay, okay, I will share my screen. Uh... Sounds good. Okay. So. So welcome again, and thanks for for joining the call. So today we will be talking about about uh, KEDA, about Project KEDA, which is Kubernetes Event Driven Autoscaler. Uh, my name is Zbigniew Rubarik. Uh, I'm an engineer working at Red Hat, and. Uh, I will be uh, joined by Tom Kerho, who is, who is a software engineer at Microsoft. We are both maintainers uh, of, of this project. Oh, Tom is here. No, hello, Tom. Good morning, good evening. Sorry for being late. Good morning, no worries. So, so uh, guys, do you need, do you need some uh, short introduction of what is Kera about? Do you want me to do a short short intro? To refresh I, I know or... I know what it's about. So, uh, Heba, do you wanna do you do you, do you like uh, wanna understand a little bit about it, or are you good? No, we can we can get that. Okay, I know Keda very well. <laughs> All right, awesome. So, so can we? Because sorry, I forgot. The, so, should we skip the intro or should we go? I I think we can skip it. Uh, I was just oh, wondering. If, okay. Do we need to record? It's already recorded. So are being yeah welcome. yeah so I will I will skip skip those first slides so basically we are yeah uh, so I, I think Zibnik, I think the most because I mean we did this for incubation uh, a lot of it so I think it might be uh, good to just focus on more of the updates between incubation and definitely now. yeah 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 okay yeah okay. that's 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 on the agenda so I will just skip the introduction part so we will go right to the uh to the new stuff i just want to hi highlight this uh this slide so like the project was started uh in in spring uh, 2019 and uh, we slowly progressed uh towards this you know this proposal for cncf graduation uh we opened the proposal uh in september 2022 so which is already a few months so we will be very happy if we are able to to tackle this down. Okay, so what has changed since the CNCF incubation? Tom, do you want to continue on this? And you are muted, by the way. Uh, I should not be muted now. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay. So um, at its core uh, today, Kada's major added value is the scalers that you can use to auto scale. Um, uh, and in this slide, you can basically see the CNCF milestones compared to uh, our releases at the bottom, and then the growth of all the scalers um, that we have. So I'm happy to share that in the next version, so 2.11, we will actually reach the uh, milestone of 60 scalers out of the box, which normally excludes our extensibility scalers. And with those, I mean uh, external scaler external push and metrics API. So that means we have 60 technologies or cloud services that you can scale uh, with compared to a little less than 40 uh, since incubation. 
uh, and we are seeing more and more contributions from the community on these as well. Uh, so we're, we're very proud of this. Uh, if we go uh, and interrupt me if you have any questions. So if you have, if we have a closer look at what else we did is like uh, I mentioned, we added uh, 33 new scalers. Uh, and we also started focusing more on the authentication providers that we offer. So we added three new one, uh, three new ones, sorry, uh, which is now nine in total, uh, of which we have support for the major cloud providers uh, as well. Uh, pausing auto scaling is another new addition, so that if you need to do maintenance on your cluster or you have cluster starvation. Uh, they can now just apply an annotation, which is going to just stop uh, auto scaling and keep them on the current uh, instance count. And then a new area that we started uh, getting into is uh, we have seen a lot of scenarios. We are starting to see best practices uh, that we also document, but why stop there? So we introduced a uh, admission controller uh, where if you're changing uh, your resources, be it uh, deploying a scaled object or create an HPA, we will basically help you enforce these best practices so that you do not have, let's say, three auto-scaling rules influencing the same workload, which is uh, a bit of a recipe for disaster. And we're planning to uh, expand that with more rules, uh, also make sure that uh, end users can write their own rules. Uh, so this is uh, like a whole big area that uh, we started working on. And then something I'm personally proud of is uh, we started working with the tag environmental sustainability because auto scaling is great, uh, but that also uh, has an impact on our environment, which can be negative, but we can also make sure that it becomes a positive. Uh, impact. So Zibinek and myself helped uh, on a POC, which basically um, helps uh, end users scale uh, scale out if the impact is low. But if the uh, energy becomes what they call dirty, it will automatically start scaling in workloads to reduce their uh, impact. Uh, one question about this is kind of this is very interesting. So like, do you have a yeah or plans to implement some sort of an API that maybe monitors the footprint or some of these things and maybe automatically. Yes. So, so the goal of the POC was identify, okay, if we want to do this, what do we need? And as always, the problem is getting the data and finding a unified way, uh, which is the me main uh, takeaway from this POC is um, either we need to come up with uh, implementation of multiple providers, meaning for Azure, the data provider will be different from AWS or some, some other provider. Uh, however, in parallel, uh, we, and with we, I mean uh, the cloud native community should start focusing on introducing a standard for offering this data so that it's easier to integrate with. And that would be the next step is uh, for Keda to uh, make this kind of a, part of an add-on, let's say, and in parallel, make sure there is a standard that we can use uh, to integrate uh, with. And I believe that's, uh, and Zibian, I can correct me because he's the expert on that, but I believe that's also what the tag environmental sustainability is looking at, building that uh, abstract spec saying, this is how you offer the data. Because it turns out this is very hard because in order to know how dirty the electricity is, you need to know what the data center is, but the cloud providers don't mention that for security reasons. So it's a bit of a tricky thing to achieve there. Does that answer yeah. your question? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, this is, this is good, yeah. I've, yeah, yeah. I've had, uh... I just want to highlight that basically the hardest, hardest point is uh, is to uh, get the API. So to to get an agreement on some on some common, Common interface, some some kind of standards, but this is on the long run. But I I hope that we will be able to do this because this could uh, have a huge impact. I would say. Yeah, the, the, one thing that might be good to point out is that the sooner you start working on it, the the more leverage you'll have to have a standard because uh, if like all the cloud providers start creating like their own APIs, so so it will be harder to integrate yeah. later. Right. So. 
Yeah. Yeah, and realistically, we we think the best approach is to go with a let's say data provider model, so you can start implementing some of the providers, see how that goes, and in parallel, see how much synergy there is, what's the unified abstraction, and then come up with a idea on how to build like a unified data approach. Uh, but this will obviously take take some time. Oh, okay, good. then in terms of artifacts and deployment scenarios, um, this is more of a, a chore one, but we moved away from Docker Hub for obvious reasons. But as part of that, we also started signing our container images, and we now also allow you to deploy an ARM, which is not only nice for ARM, but also comes back to the environmental sustainability because it has less impact, because it has less, it needs less resources. Uh, we also now have reproducible builds, and we now integrate with Azure better in the sense that we support all of its clouds, not just the public one. Uh, and this is important because I think around 10 of the skillers that we have uh, are for Azure, so that, that has a big impact here. Um, security is also important, so obviously we did a security audit, but uh, apart from that, we already uh, did some let's say more advanced things like if you're using pod identity you can now uh, have more uh, refined identity scopes that they can use and our container image is also secured by default and no longer runs as root which is important for enterprises as well you can use your custom uh, certificate authority for tls and we expanded our scanning suite both for uh, our container image images sorry and for uh, the code that we uh, write as well, um, for which we actually had a fairly good security audit, uh, I think personally, uh, but the feedback we uh, incorporated within a day or so, I think. So um, I'm clearly biased, but I think we're doing fairly okay uh, on the security prompt as well. Any questions before we go to the next slide? Anything that came up with the security audit that, that the project had to, or, or everything was? Uh... Um, I think the major thing was uh, 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 how we handled uh, URIs for a certain scalar. I would think it was Redis or something where we were not uh, tokenizing things correctly. Um, and maybe Sabine can correct me, but I think that was the only thing. Uh, yeah, that was the only only like let's say medium medium severity. We ha didn't have any any high severity, I would say, and we already yeah. like mitigate this this problem. And we also, as Sister mentioned, we already uh, we got some uh, recommendations for for the extended uh, security scanning. So we uh, we are using SEMgrep uh, for, yeah. for doing this stuff. I and, think uh, we're using five to ten tools on this front. Uh, at some point, you can have too many, but <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. Hey, but you have any questions? Or... Six, five. Okay, cool. Um, another area where we wanted to be more serious is uh, if you deploy Kata today, that's fine, but let's make. Uh, I think he froze. Yeah, 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 post. Uh, okay, I'll bring him. So while while uh, we are waiting for Tom to be yeah. back, yeah, Tom, you were you were uh, you were off for okay. a couple of seconds. Can you share with us the security audit result, please? That uh, yes, I yeah. will. Thank uh, you. Yeah. I will do that uh, when uh, I switch back to Zibinic. Uh, yeah, what we I can saying, do this after the fact. Yeah, no problem. Uh, what I was saying is that uh, another area we wanted to be more serious in is how you run Kata in production and understand what is going on. So a big effort we did was uh, provide operational metrics for Prometheus, not only uh, in terms of uh, the health of your scalers, like can you still authenticate how many errors there are, but also in terms of um, the size of your Kata deployment, meaning how many apps are you scaling, how which triggers are they using, etc. 
And this is mainly for the platforms that build on top of Keda so that they also have a feel of what the size is. Uh, and to help with these metrics, we also have this off the shelf Rafana dashboard that end users can just take and deploy uh, and get started with these metrics. I would like to add one more thing to this. Uh, there is one, uh, one interesting uh, metric that we share, uh, which is uh, which is the, the latency of getting metrics from the from the external scalers. So this is, I would say, like indirect uh, indirect view on on uh, the health of your of your system because this way you can see that, for example, if you are consuming metrics from different sources, some Prometheus, some Kafka instance. Uh, if you if you see some increase in the in the latency in getting metrics, this could uh, give you some you know, some guidance. Maybe uh, that's something with the with the stuff is not uh, not uh, not great. So this is like I would say like this indirect indirect stuff, which is very cool. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and then in terms of quality, like uh, as we see more contributions and as we have more scalers. Uh, we also needed to scale our testing. Uh, and this, this was twofold. One is it used to be a manual operation to add uh, resources or to manage the cluster. So now that is fully uh, automated uh, across cloud providers and automatically deployed. So uh, this is a very big one. So if we get a contribution for a new scale, they can just send the PR uh, if they need them. And we can use chat ops in PRs to uh, basically trigger end-to-end -end tests, either for the whole suite or just for one or more uh, scalers, which is a true lifesaver uh, for us. Um, and then governance is also important, of course. So uh, we spend some time on defining policies and uh, also started enforcing our Kubernetes compatibility uh, and also give a better understanding there of if you have Keda 2.10 installed, what are the Kubernetes versions that we are uh, supporting and are compatible. In theory, more, uh, they can have longer support, but we narrow down uh, to three releases for Keda version, if I'm not mistaken, which just follows the Kubernetes approach. Uh, and we also uh, automatically automated, sorry, our roadmap and uh, end users now have a predictability of when a certain KDA version is being released up to three releases in the future. So they can also plan uh, their migrations uh, if they need to. So I think this is the off the top of my head um, overview. We also work with the people from Artifact Hub because we have this external scaler concept. So now on Artifact Hub, there is also a Keda scaler uh, concept, uh, which everybody can just add their scalers. And we have also integrated this in our documentation so that it not only shows the built-in scalers, but also external. So we're trying to build a community around of these uh, externals as well uh, in our documentation. So in terms of the community has also grown a lot. So uh, we have, uh, for whatever it's worth, uh, 6.1 uh, thousand stars on GitHub uh, with 260 contributors. Uh, but I'm most, most proud on the uh, image on the right, which has uh, more than 40, I think it's 46 uh, listed end users. Um, and there are a couple of other ones that I would like to mention, but we're not allowed legally, which are really major, <laughs> which is, makes it like even worse that I cannot mention it. But uh, yeah, um, we're really seeing the growth on the adoption as well. And I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot uh, that are not here either that, you know, because they, they pick up the project, but they don't actually necessarily yes. cost. Yeah. Yes, unfortunately. So if we compare this with incubation, uh, it's 42 that we have today, which is plus one, 280% uh, since we opened the uh, incubation proposal. And uh, based on the recent CNCF survey, uh, all uh, recipients, uh, sorry, um, everybody that filled it in, 11% uh, of them said they run KEDA in their Kubernetes cluster, which is a growth of 150% in one year, which is also uh, very nice. 
Then there's Azure Container Apps, which is a, a, an Azure service that's built on top of Keda, which has become generally available. So that means they also rely on us to scale the whole service. And then uh, Azure Kubernetes Service and Red Hat OpenShift now have a managed offering uh, of Keda uh, in preview, but they're both targeted to go generally available uh, before this summer, which means they will also offer support for Keda as well, which shows that uh, both customers are asking for it and uh, platform builders are embracing Keda more and more to do their uh, cloud native scaling. And with that, I hand it over to Zipinek, unless there are any qu questions. Um, it's amazing, of course, <laughs> but I have uh, just a uh, like question about the performance test. Uh, do we have any performance tests in, uh, in the plan or the roadmap, or we already did some of them? Yeah, so I got this question before. Uh, the, the problem is that there's not much to performance tests because we integrate with all these external providers and we make them available to uh, like Kubernetes through the metric server. So the only uh, performance test we could do is basically just test the metric server, uh, but we do not have this. Uh, however, we this is where we rely on the end users because we know customers, that, sorry, end users that have more than thousands of these scaled objects and they report that it's fine. If we would want to like load test this, we don't have the infrastructure to do this. Obviously. Uh, but I yeah, personally- the, the infra... Go ahead. Sorry. No, I, I, I just want to highlight that the infrastructure is the one, one point that blocks us from, from this. And, and the other, we have 60 plus different scalers. We can, you know, and it's it's very actually hard to measure the performance because how can we measure the performance because each Kubernetes cluster is different you know uh, each external service is different so it's it's actually very hard to to measure measure some kind of performance uh, on this on this front we can we can do some some basic stuff but I'm not sure if it is worth the effort and and the actual spend on the infrastructure. I know, I know it's a, it's really complicated problem because like Keda is just enabling the, the feature, but you know, like it, it depends on, you know, like the provider, how, you know, like how the provider will, will scale. I know that, yeah. but um, uh, so what, what, what I wanted to, to test here is, you know, like from release to release or, you know, like when we, uh, you know, like up, you know, like to, version X in Keda, you know, like the performance is not getting worse. So um, I'm, I'm trying to, to find like a pace, uh, a pace um, information that we can compare with. So uh, maybe we can run the performance test just once per release, just, you know, like to have, to have something to, you know, like to compare with, which, uh, I, I really like to see it as well, you know, like uh, uh, for the compatibility tests as well with, you know, like different Kubernetes versions. So it's like, okay, in 1.24, we had like, you, you know, like all the end-to-end -end tests, uh, you know, like passed, or maybe the performance with, you know, like this Kubernetes version was X, but, you know, like in 127, it was like less or uh, above. And you know, it's it's just, you know, like might not be like a good reference because there is a lot of other, uh, you know, like factors, maybe like new feature, maybe something like that. But but uh, what I wanted to, to, you know, like to mention here, if there is drop in performance, we can, we can just notice. It's like, okay, there is a PR here, you know, like in this new release that cause, a dramatic, you know, like change in the performance. So we can notice that, especially mm -hmm. that Keda now, you know, like it's all over the place. It is, you know, like already uh, integrated with multiple product products already. So it might really hit it if like the performance just, you know, like drop a little bit for any reason. Mm -hmm. It's a fair point. I think I, I'm just more worried about the practical things because we rely on 
all these uh, external services. We use HPA. So there's so many things that can influence it. But um, now that you mention it, there might be an approach where we could just uh, focus all the testing on the metric server. So we rule out the HPA. And maybe we can just use one or more scalers or even use an external scalar to also rule out the third party dependency and just do just request the metrics as if you would be Kubernetes during a certain yeah. period of time and see how that goes. Yeah, I, I will create a follow up right for that. It's maybe maybe you can uh, look at a, mo a more constrained environment, right? Like a maybe instead of reaching out to like api external apis we can you know set up like an own like use an internal metric server or that type of thing because yeah the issue is with reaching out to external apis is that the external apis can have a variable response time right so sometimes they have like 20 milliseconds sometimes they have 40 milliseconds so how do you measure that right but but maybe if you have a more constraint and and you know what you get type of environment all the time then then that might be a good uh, baseline so. yeah good point yeah yeah these are really great uh, great suggestions i just want to mention one, one thing from my experience like talking to like users i would say that the most critical part actually is the hpa and the hpa controller in kubernetes uh, because if you have a lot of a lot of metrics, then the HPA is not able to actually handle handle loads. So uh, we we even work on this front in upstream and uh, submitted uh, uh, enhancement in in in, a, in a HPA controller to to process the metrics uh, concurrently. So it uh, helped a little bit on this front. But yeah, we, we we can we can we can think about scenario when we when we uh, don't stress the external services but really the internals yeah yeah, yeah. and you can just have like um um you know like an in best performance test or whatever uh, you know like the test name that we're trying to do now just for the you know like the native kubernetes or without any uh, you know like it's for example the metric you know like the the native metric service or you know like the the, FDR, the hpa and you can you know like you can ask all the providers to do the same, you know, like from their ends, uh, and you know, like you can run this test uh, only just, you know, like each release. I think that's that's the, you know, like the main the main concern. Actually, it should concern providers more than you know, like uh, the open source. Uh, so they they should have this uh, test anyways, you know, like regardless anything. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's just to, you know, like to. To play safe for that you know like from performance nothing nothing happening from open source perspective that affect any other one mm -hmm. yeah good point okay so uh if you don't have any other questions uh we can quickly take a look on the roadmap on and what's what's planned for for the next couple of releases uh so uh we would like to uh introduce new scalers so extend the scalers portfolio we have 60 but you know it's never enough because there are new services new offerings and new, new possibilities especially on edge uh, then we would like to really work on uh, because uh, i would say in my opinion that keda is doing great the auto scaling part and all the all the stuff related but we would like to really extend the, the ecosystem a little bit to provide more information and more context for Either platform providers or for users. So we would like to integrate with, uh, with cloud events. So we would like to emit cloud events uh, that will inform users about like what's happening in the cluster and uh, in in Keda and with the scaling. Uh, then we have like this uh, a never-ending uh, ask and questions about uh, when we will support uh, HTTP-based auto scaling because that's the completely different technique that we have today. So. We would like to work on on this on this panels also, and then there are um, uh, several items related to uh, a, uh, highly available Keda installations or multi-tenant installations. Because at the moment we are blocked from the up upstream because we are using HPA and the HPA is, is using the external metrics a, uh, endpoint API endpoint, 
to talk together or the vice versa but we would like to uh, we would like to really uh, try to work on on multiple CADA instances uh, in one cluster so to find a solution how to how to enable users to to do that we have done some modifications already in the in the code that will enable us to do that in the future but this is like a really hot topic because for example the platform providers or even like uh, users in big enterprises they would like to have separate like the uh, uh, control planes for for different teams or customers so we would like to work on this uh and maybe uh, yeah the, the last point is is uh let's say to to make make it more user friendly like the the, the creation of skilled objects and enabling the auto scaling so we have done some some on this part with the with the webhooks integration so now we are checking that uh that some uh, that the skill objects are created correctly but we can we can also um, work more on this and uh, do it more more let's say uh hopefully. and the continuation is so the the first item is the open open telemetry so this is uh this is i would say in connection with the cloud events so uh the same uh, same with the cloud event integration, it would be open telematic uh, uh, integration. We can we can uh, share uh, or uh, emit open telemetry metrics regarding the scaling, scaling but we, we can also have a scaler that works with open telemetry metrics. So these are like this, these two approaches. There is one interesting and cool feature that's been in progress at the moment. Uh, there is a um, university uh, student who is working on his on his vehicle traces. Uh, on this on this topic, uh, which is uh, the capability to define uh, auto scaling rules. So at the moment, for example, if we would like to scale some deployment, we can we can uh, define the scaling triggers. It could be one or multiple triggers. And in case there are multiple triggers, uh, at the moment, what we do, we just we just uh, provide this these metrics to HPA, and HPA does the decision on the scaling. So let's say if we have multiple triggers. The HPA always selects the greatest value for the target target metric or target replic account, and we would like to we would like to bring some some uh, logic into it. So uh, for users to specify, okay, let's not use the maximum number, but maybe use the average number across multiple scalers in one scaled object, or maybe uh, create more complex logic. So for example, if scalar A is above the threshold, but uh, B and C is below the threshold to do something. So, so something like this. So, this like more advanced auto scaling rules. And other cool, cool stuff could be like the predictive auto scaling. We have already uh, a scaler that is doing this, which is called PredictCube. Uh, it's based on uh, on uh, on proprietary service, so uh, customers can use it and use this user service. But we would like to have similar offering um, made. Um, in open source, so maybe maybe a way how to plug uh, machine learning and AI models into Geta, which will monitor the the traffic and maybe suggest such as the scaling or scale predictively. Another, like I would say, high level high level item is the bring uh, Keda auto scaling engine outside of Kubernetes. So I think that we are doing great on the on scaling of. Kubernetes resources, but maybe we can think about uh, extending the, extend the portfolio with other services, other other stuff. This is very high level stuff that we are just just considering. And uh, the the last point we already talked about is uh, which is the collaboration with uh, CNCF Environmental Sustainability Tech, which is which was the POC on on the on the carbon uh, related auto scaling. Uh, Tom, do you want to add anything? No, I think uh, that's uh, that's about it. Uh, then uh, to wrap up, we just want to show that Keda is not the only solution you need, uh, and uh, that we basically work best with other technologies, such as uh, Cluster Autoscaler and Virtual Nodes, where we focus only on the app deliberately, uh, while other technologies just come and help in. We get a question a lot like, how can I scale my nodes with Keda? Uh, and we just tell them to either look at Cluster Autoscaler or Carpenter or the like, uh, because uh, we strongly believe that 
you should do uh, one thing and only one thing well uh, and uh, just stick with that. Uh, and I think with that, uh, we're at the end of the uh, presentation. So I don't know if you have uh, any other questions or concerns. That's good. I don't have any questions. Um, so looking forward to next steps in graduation. Uh, do you require a TOC sponsor for, for this, or do you already have a TOC sponsor? Uh, we, we already have a Kathy. Uh, okay. doing the interviews perfect perfect yeah yeah the yeah. last the last step now is uh, get the tags approval uh complete due diligence doc uh for review uh and then i think we're just uh going to play the waiting game yeah i think there's no like formal process for tag approval i think this presentation is 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 what constitutes the approval right so um uh, Unless Kathy has anything that she would like to get back to us and check, then but then you can consider this presentation recording, you know, the next step with the the tag, right? Okay, thank you very much. Amazing work as usual. So thank you so much for your contributions and amazing work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank if you for, for the you review have... and for the comments. Yeah. yeah, if you have any questions afterwards, so feel free to just uh, send them over or open issues. Uh, we're always happy to hear feedback. Will do. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Talk to you later. Have a good Bye. day. Bye. Bye. Bye.